Hello future engineers, welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're still new to my channel and you like what I'm doing, please don't forget to share my videos to your friends and to your friends' friends. That's one way you can help me promote my channel to keep me going, inspired and refreshed. Now, if you appreciate my videos and you find them interesting to your studies, also don't forget to subscribe. So here is the problem and I want you to take note of member U2L2 which I presented the concept in the construction of influence line for trusses and the transmission of loads. So a flat truss shown carries a uniform live load of 2 kN per meter, a single concentrated live load of 15 kN, this one. Determine the following, the maximum stress of L2, L3, the maximum stress of U2, L2, and the maximum stress of member U1, L1. So this is the flat truss. First for, for L2, L3. So it's like drawing the free body diagram and apply the, the applicable method, method of sections or method of joints. But in this case, we have to apply method of sections. But we have to first construct the influence line for the reaction of LO. So the shortcut supposed to be, you just push this, then 1, then 0 at L6. But let's establish the equation first. So summation, let's have the loading, the unit load, although this one is not really moving across these bottom cords of the truss. It's just an imaginary because the actual load is moving on the slab. And we just want to compute the forces reactions at these uh, panel points, then compute the force of the member attached to that panel point. So summation of moment about G equals R about 6 equals 0. So RLO times 18 equals 1 times 18 minus X. So RLO is equal to uh, 1 over 18 of 18 minus X. This is applicable for LX. That's why when X is 0, RLO is 1. When x is 3, RL is 15 over 18 or 5, 6, and so on and so forth, as shown in the figure. Then let's consider section to the left of section 1 dash 1. Let's consider that and draw the free body diagram, which is this. So let's call this distance from LO as x, then the distance of the unit load from, imaginary unit load from U2 is 6 minus x because its panel is 3 meters uh, long. So summation moment u2 equals 0. So we have sl2 l3 times 4 plus 1 times 6 minus x then equals rlo times 6. Dividing everything by 4, simplifying SL to L3 is equal to 1.5 of RLO minus one fourth of quantity 6 minus X. This is applicable. This uh, this is applicable for the movement of the load from zero to this joint L to here. So zero less than equal to X less than equal to six. Beyond that, the unit load is not no longer part of the free body diagram. So we just remove the contribution of this. So it is equal to 1.5 of RLO, SL to L3. So when X is 0, you will find SL to L3 equals uh, 0 also. When X is 3, use this formula and you will find SL to L3. When x is 6, this becomes 0, so it reduces to 1.5 of RLO, and this is the maximum value of the ordinate to the stress of L to L3. And RLO when x is 6 is equal to 2 thirds, so 1.5 of 2 thirds is 1. So as shown in the figure, the influence line can now be drawn. This is equal to 1.0. Show that it is 
1.5 when x is 3 using this equation here 1.5 of 5 over 6 minus 1 fourth of quantity 6 minus 3 you will get 0.5 then the rest you don't need to label these ordinates because this is the maximum and the uh, and the value of rlo beyond 6 reduces so the ordinates reduces linearly also so you just find the value or the ordinate to the influence line where it is maximum next for u to l2 let's consider uh, section to the left of u2 section 2, two. so sl2 l3 max due to the live loads we have 15 for the concentrated load and the maximum ordinate is one then plus two times the area under the influence line since the member l2 l3 is a bottom cord member at its intention that's why the influence line is positive all the diagram is positive there is positive because it is intention so therefore sl2 l3 max is equal to 33 kilonewtons at it is and it is intention for u to l2 let's consider forces to the left of uh, section 2 2 so the free body diagram look like this and so that these two members here will not be involved in our static equation the best equation is summation forces y so s u2 l2 plus r l o equals 1 therefore s u2 l2 equals 1 minus r l o and that is applicable for 0 less than equal to x less than equal to 6 up to here the unit load is up to here so that it is still part of the free body diagram beyond that it's no longer part of the free body diagram so we remove one s u2 l2 would be negative of r l o and that is when x is greater than 6 so when x is 0 r l s u2 l2 is 0 when x is 3 1 minus 5 6 is 1 6 when x is 6 then exactly 6 1 minus 2 thirds is 1 third so the maximum value positive is 1 third up to 6 so we don't need to put 1 6 here let's proceed to 1 third then when x is 9 this is now the formula and our LO is 1 half when x is 9 so negative of 1 half so it drops to negative 1 half Remember the principle between panel points, you just connect, you just determine the ordinates, then connect them with a straight line. So that's negative one half, then the rest, because this is linear and RLO decreases, so you just connect it from negative one half to this end zero. And since we have this influence line, we have to solve for this distance called that x1. So this is three minus x1. By similar triangle so x1 as to one third equals 3 minus x1 as to one half then solving for x1 x1 equals 1.2 remember the principle it's 1.2 when x1 is 1.2 when the unit load is here imaginary unit load is here we find s2 l2 equal zero it was zero in the principle and it is also zero here when x when the unit load is at l2 this is one third so one third of 30 is 10 kilonewtons remember it was 30 when when the unit load is here when the moving load is transmitted to the floor beam l3 l3 prime this is negative one half negative one half of 30 is negative 15 and it was also negative 15 remember for the total uh, stress in in u2 l2 for the two side trusses so that's 1.2 meters 
This is 1.8 meters. Therefore, the negative value is greater compared to the positive value. The maximum stress in U2L2 is um, negative or compression. So SU2L2 max is equal to 15 times negative 1 half plus 2 kN per meter times area of this area of this negative part. 1 half of 10.8339 plus 1.8, 10.8 times negative 1 half. So it is negative, let's make it positive, but level it is compression. So S U to L2 max is is 12.9 kN compression. Finally, for U1 L1, uh, when the unit load is here, it is zero. Actually, this is a zero force member if, if there is no moving load. But in particular, when the unit load is at L1, then this is equal to 1. So the free body diagram, so this is a zero force member if there is no uh, moving load, but since there is moving load and there will come a point in time where the unit load will be at L1, this is now the situation, summation forces Y, SU1 L1 equals 1. So SU1 L1 is equal to 1 in particular when X is 3 meters. When the unit load is at L2, it is 0. At, at LO, it is 0. At L2, 0. And when the unit load moves from L2 to L6, it is 0. So SU1 L1 is equal to 1 for X is equal to 3 meters only. And the rest, it is 0. So the influence line would look like this. And this is 1.0. So therefore, SU1 L1 max is 15 times 1, then plus 2 times the area under this diagram, 2 times 1 half of 6 times 1. So SU1 L1 max is tension and it is 21 kilonewtons. So that's it for this problem. Actually, if you can find the point where the ordinates to the influence line will change. You just put the unit load there, then analyze that particular member. If it changes, then you put the unit load on the other uh, panel point, then analyze the stress of that member. So that's the technique. You select two points where we have great variation in the ordinates and analyze the stress of that member by any method.